Hello everybody and welcome back to The Second Shelf and to another Recent Reads video on Sunday uh, in which I discuss the books that I've read recently. And a dis disclaimer up front, uh, if you hear noise in the background, music, drums, it's not me, but it's the 11th of November and I'm in Cologne and the 11th of the 11th means the start of carnival season and they do take their carnival really seriously here in Cologne. So sorry about that. But anyway, back to the books. It was a bit of a mixed bag for me this week. Uh, so let's dive right into it. And the first book I want to talk about is actually not even a book from last week, but from the week before. And that is Samantha Harvey's The Western Wind, uh, which came out, I think, in March in the UK and now in November uh, in the US, if I'm not mistaken. I received a copy um, from Nat Gelly. Thank you very much. Um, and I talked about this book in the recent reads from last week that I wanted to think about it um, and maybe reread it. I indeed reread read parts of it. Um, but let me first back up a little and tell you about the author and the book. Samantha Harvey is an um, English author. She lives in Bath in England. Um, uh, she's written um, previous novels and her first one, I think it was called The Wilderness, uh, was uh, received or was nominated for the Orange Prize, um, if I'm not mistaken. I know I should have checked that. What can you do? Um, and now The Western Wind is historical fiction. It's set in 1491 in a small village um, in England um, and a very secluded village. The village is sort of cut off from the world by a river and there is no bridge uh, over the river. So it's, it's really a secluded uh, um, little hamlet. Um, the book opens when the uh, town priest, who is also the narrator the, of the book, he tells us the story. Uh, and like I said, the book opens when um, the, the body of um, the rich Thomas Newman, the rich man of the village, is found drowned in the river. Um, we then go backwards in time. So we start with the third day, as it were, when the body is discovered, and then we go back to the second and the first day, um, and the, the story, what happened to Thomas Newman, did he commit suicide, did he just drown, was it an accident, or was he murdered, is revealed through, the t t t through telling the story backwards. Um, now, the reason that I didn't uh, talk about that book in my last recent reads and that I wanted to, you know, read parts of it is that I didn't like it. And I felt when I saw the raving reviews on Goodreads that it was probably me and that I didn't get it. Um, but... Uh, thankfully, <laughs> it turned out I was not the only one because I don't read that much historical fiction. So that was the reason that I thought it's probably me. Um, but I talked uh, to Mel over at Mel's Bookland Adventures and she disliked the book even more than I did. So I thought, well, maybe it's not me. Maybe it's the book. My problem with the book were two main things. I liked the setting I liked uh, the, the, the themes that were explored, uh, especially the theme of confession, because the town priest, uh, John Reeve, he hears, you know, the secrets from everybody. I also liked the atmosphere, this sort of really claustrophobic little village, um, cut off from the rest of the world. Um, but what I didn't like um, uh, was the... The, it didn't feel authentic to me as historical fiction. There were, you know, the, these sort of, it, it didn't feel as if the author did a lot of research in order to present to me the world in 1591. She didn't care whether there was already tea invented uh, at that time or whether there were female um, head of the parishes or whether, you know, the confession um, chamber was invented. And that that just didn't f sit well with me. Um, and I had a, a, a bigger problem also with the structure because, you, like I said, you told, the story is told backwards. Um, and in the end, uh, in the last chapter, which is the first day when everything is revealed, I really felt cheated as, um, as a reader because um, 
that's difficult without giving you any spoilers, but because when you then go back to the first chapter, even though you are in John Reeves' head and you see the story from his perspective, you realize that he, the author made him say things um, that he, in order to um, put you on the wrong track as it were. And I, I just don't like it. So it was not a successful read for me, but check out the Goodreads reviews. Maybe it's something for you if you're interested in that kind of thing. But for me, it was unfortunately not a success. Much more a success was the second book I want to talk to you about, and that is Crime, uh, Jane Harper, The Lost Man, which was published just recently in October. Um, now, you might know how much I love Jane Harper's book, The Dry. Um, the Dry is a first in a series. The second one, The Force of Nature, didn't quite convince me as much. Um, but uh, The Lost Man is a standalone. So if you're interested in um, checking out Jane Harper, um, and if you don't want to go back to the first in a series, The Lost Man is a good book to start because it's a really good book. But it is for a crime book, it's a quite a slow burner. The book uh, is set, as are all her previous books, in the outback of Australia, in the middle of nowhere, and tells a story of three brothers, Nathan, uh, the oldest, Cam, the middle brother, and Bob, the youngest. Uh, the book opens when Cam's body is found uh, dead, um, even more in the middle of nowhere, and it turns out that he, um, I mean, it's very hot there, so he died from dehydration and sun exposure. It's not clear what happened, whether he killed himself, or whether he was murdered, or whether it was an accident. Um, and then the book slowly uh, develops the story of the three brothers, uh, the family history a little bit, uh, but mainly the story of the brothers and their farms and wives and what happened. And we learn about Kem, especially the victim, um, but also about Nathan and Bob. And in the end, it's of course revealed what has happened to Kem. But this is not your... Um, typical uh, thriller or detective story. The detectives in the book play a minor role. It's much more about the family and family secrets. Uh, I still thought it was a really good book. Um, the characters were interesting. Um, the atmosphere was uh, really well done. This, at least for me, not knowing Australia, this, this feeling of the outback, uh, the you know, the loneliness, for instance, Nathan, he lives alone on his farm. So I thought that was extremely well done. But if you're looking for, you know, a police procedural or your typical really, really fast paced uh, thriller with, cl with cliffhangers um, at the end of every chapter, this might not be the book for you. But if you are, if you wa want to venture into more uh, why done it's kind of uh, detective novels, then I can certainly recommend this book. Moving on to book number three, uh, nonfiction, because on the 1st of November, uh, Nonfiction November started. Uh, if you're not familiar with this read-along uh, organized by Olive from A Book Olive and Gemma from Nonfic Books, I will leave a link to Olive's announcement video down below. You can check out all the details. In short, um, it's a read-along that uh, Olive and Gemma organize each year in November in order to encourage us to read more nonfiction. That's basically it. Uh, they are prompts. You can, you can, you know, help you uh, choose books. But the, the, the thing is, just read more nonfiction. Uh, I made a TBR video trying to, uh, I looked at the prompts and found books that I wanted to read. Uh, leave a link to my TBR video also down below. And last week, I wanted to read my first book for Nonfiction November. And true to form, of course, I picked a book that was not on my TBR and that didn't fit any of the prompts. But hey, what can you do? The book in question is True Crime, uh, and Rule's book about Ted Bundy called The Stranger Beside Me. The book was first published in 1980. 
Um, uh, and Anne Rule is a true crime writer. She started off in the police force and then ventured into writing uh, about a true crime. Um, now, the why this book... Now, let me first say that I came across this book in a video done by Robert from Barter Hortz. Uh, I will leave a link to his wonderful channel down below. He deserves many more subscribers than he has now, so please check him out and subscribe. But he mentioned this book, I think, in his uh, Nonfiction November TBR. And I had heard about it uh, because it's, yeah, 1980, the first publishing date, and never read it, so I picked it up. Um, what is really interesting about this book is the fact that Anne Rule uh, not only met Ted Bundy, uh, but became friends with him um, uh, when they, she's 10 years older than Ted Bundy. They work together um, in, a, in an organization that has um, um, a suicide helpline. They were colleagues there uh, and they became friends and Anne Rule stayed in touch with him uh, even after he uh, was arrested, until he was executed. Um, uh, so that makes for a, an interesting um, point of view for the story. Uh, the book then tells um, uh, the, uh, about Ted Bunny's life, but also in great detail about the murders he committed. As a side note, don't do what I did. Read it in bed at night because then you probably can't sleep, at least I couldn't. Um, so it tells you the, the story of the, the, the women he, he butchered, uh, about the trial, about how he was captured and then escaped and then recaptured. Um, but it also gives you the perspective of somebody who met the man and was friends with him and couldn't believe that this is the same Ted Bundy that killed all these women. So I thought that that was a really interesting perspective. Um, and even though the book was first published in 1980, there are amendments, as it were, to the book after words, after thoughts from the author and rule from 2000 and 2008 in order you know, to give you an update. So it's not, in that sense, an outdated book. If you're interested in true crime, it's certainly worth picking up. But again, don't read it at night. And uh, I will pick up one book from my TBR. I already did as a second read, and that is This Unthinkable by Helen whoops, Thompson uh, about uh, extraordinary brains. So at least I will have read one book of my TBR when a nonfiction November is over. Final book I want to talk to you about is this one, Tsitsi Dangaremga, This Mournable Body. Uh, it was just published August 2018, and it is the third book in a trilogy called The Nervous Condition. Uh, following the life of the same main character, uh, Tambudzi, uh, who is a, a woman, a um, 30 ish something woman in here, and is a child in the first book, and then you know we follow her life uh, through. But you can read this as a standalone, like I did, because this was my first novel uh, by this author, so it's not a trilogy in the sense that you have to read all three books in order. Um, uh, Dangaremga is a Zimbabwean author. Uh, and this was a buddy read for me uh, with Sean from Sean the Book Maniac and Eric from The Lonesome Reader. And it wasn't a success. I think Eric liked it the most from the three of us. Uh, Sean definitely the least because he bailed <laughs> halfway through. Um, I was more with Sean. I didn't think it was a good book, but I at least finished it. Um, and oh, by the way, Sean, in preparation uh, for the buddy read, he read the previous two books in the series, and I will leave a link to his video discussing all three books, or two and a half books, because he bailed on this one down below. Um, now, this uh, book is set in Harare, and we uh, follow Tambu, as I said, when she was, I think she's in her 30s, we don't really know her age, and her life is not going well. In the beginning, when the book opens, she lives in a hostel. Uh, she doesn't have any work. Um, uh, she doesn't know what to do with herself. The book is written in second person, so you, um, which didn't help I, for me because it didn't add to the pleasure of reading at all. Uh, but the main problem for me was 
that I thought the themes and the topics were interesting. You know, a young woman trying to find her life in, in Zimbabwe, um, having mental issues, family issues, um, issues with um, finding her way in society. But the execution for me was just bad. I, I can't say more than that. I didn't think the writing was very good. Um, I thought we, we there was a, a, a whole range of characters that were introduced and then discarded. It didn't engage me at all. Um, most of the book is written in dialogue. Um, and yeah, it's just something I, I can't explain it better than telling you that I didn't find the execution at all successful. Uh, but maybe you read it and you have a different opinion, so please let me know. Anyway, these were the four books that I wanted to talk to you about in this Recent Reads video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. As always, I'm looking forward to your comments and I'll see you all soon in my next video. Bye-bye.